There is no concrete genetic mutation that causes a cleft lip or palate in children, but recent studies have shown evidence that can triple the chances of having the disease. Published in the New England Journal of Medicine, it found that nine different point mutations in the IRF6 gene strongly relate to the development of a cleft palate. It has been discovered that a frameship deletion that occurs at the chromosome 22 at the spot Q11.2 can lead to the clefting as well. The gene is located in the middle of the chromosome, and with its deletion, clefting of the lip and palate may occur, along with other deformities in the mouth. To find the deletion on chromosome 22, fishing can also be used to determine the gene is missing. Another genetic component that may lead to the factor of oral clefting is the deletion of the MSX1 gene, which is located in chromosome 4. The MSX1 gene is necessary for normal mouth and tooth development, and deletion of this gene occurs in a disorder called Wolf-Hirschhorn syndrome. In Wolf-Hirschhorn, patients are found to have deformed mouths with entire teeth missing or deformed. By using the process of fluorescent in situ hybridization, fishing, one out of five patients in Wolf-Hirschhorn were missing the MSX1 gene. The problem with deleting the MSX1 gene is that the protein it makes help to join the skin that wraps around the head and neck, ending at the mouth, where the different flaps of skin are blended together. Without the correct proteins to finish the process, a gap is left in the roof of the mouth or on the lip, thus causing the cleft. Cleft lip and palate is not solely a genetic disease. There are many environmental factors that play a role as well. With identical twins, there is a 40% chance to 60% chance that both will have oral clefting if one twin is found to have the disease. But in fraternal twins, there is a much smaller percentage that both will be affected and is only found to have a 5% affecting rate of both. It is found that during pregnancy, mothers can increase the risk of clefting in their child by smoking tobacco, consuming alcohol. Certain studies have shown an increased risk of children having clefting that are born in countries of low socioeconomic status. These countries of low status are found to have its people with poor nutritional health and they are more likely to be exposed to toxins. These symptoms are found to be the cause of nearly one-third of all cases of oral clefting. Cleft palate and cleft lip, the two most common birth defects of the head and neck, are distinctive physical birth defects that involve gaps in the lip, upper jaw, nose, gums, and both the hard and the soft palate of the mouth. Clefting is caused by an interruption in the delicate process that is involved in facial formation by genetic mutations, by environmental factors, or as results of more serious birth defects. Clefts are often diagnosed prenatally during weeks 14 through 16 of pregnancy through the use of ultrasounds. Aside from the noticeable physical symptoms of cleft lip and palate, children born with clefts often have difficulty breathing, feeding, sucking, swallowing, and speaking. Children with clefts have particular trouble pronouncing the letters P, B, T, G, F, V, S and Z. Clefting varies greatly with each individual case. Smaller clefts in the lip can cause only a small curl in the upper lip, hardly noticeable from a distance. Larger clefts can cause a complete gap between the upper lip and the nasal cavity, and the most severe cases of cleft lip involve two large gaps being formed in the upper lip connecting both the nasal cavities to the mouth, often causing deformed teeth and dental patterns. Clefting can also occur in both the hard and soft palates of the mouth. Clefting in the hard palate is easily detected and treated with surgery and is very noticeable to doctors during a physical examination shortly done after birth. Babies with deformed hard palates have difficulty swallowing and sucking, making feeding difficult, and are prone to gagging and choking due to liquid's ability to seep into the lungs due to both the cleft and troublesome breathing caused by the cleft. Defects in the soft palate are often smaller and more difficult to detect as the soft palate is located further back in the mouth. Clefts in the soft palate can often be overlooked during the afterbirth exam as they are smaller than those that form in the hard palate. Soft palate clefting is often only discovered when the child has trouble feeding as liquids will often spill out the infant's nose, a symptom unique to soft palate clefting. Children with both types of clefting in the palate often have enlarged tonsils and adenoids, which interestingly enough are not removed as they can aid a patient's ability to swallow and suck. Problems with hearing are also more likely to occur in people born with cleft palate. The combination of speaking impairments as well as impaired hearing is believed to be the cause of difficulty in children with clefts learning to read. Advances in modern medicine have made it possible to treat this disease by repairing the cleft lip or palate. Ideally, after birth, a child with cleft palate is assigned a health team. 
This health team will walk the family through surgeries, as well as the necessary therapies and everyday challenges they will face. Babies with cleft palate often have trouble with nursing, as they cannot form a vacuum with their mouths. Families have to take special care to make sure that their child gets the nutrition it needs. This is often achieved by using modified bottles or different nursing positions. For a child with a cleft lip, their first surgery should occur between birth and three months of age. Cleft palate patients are advised to have surgery within their first year of life. A cleft lip is repaired by making small incisions along each lip flap, then stitching the loose flaps together. It is a relatively short surgery at about three hours, and the child is usually out of the hospital the next day. A cleft palate is slightly trickier to repair. There are a wide range of severities, but in general, to repair a cleft palate, the surgeon will make a small cut on both sides of the gap. He will then pull tissue from each side to the center and stitch it together. This will result in the muscle joining together and finally providing a complete palate for the child. Even after their first surgeries, many children will have to have much more medical attention before they are fully recovered. This includes follow-up surgeries, speech therapy, and possibly ear tubes to ventilate and prevent hearing loss. There is currently research underway focused on finding new treatments. Doctors may soon be able to repair a cleft lip or palate before a fetus is even born. Minimally invasive surgical techniques will minimize the mother and child's risk, and the early repair is more likely to have scarless healing. Side effects from surgery, such as speech issues and dental malformation, are usually easily treatable. After having their cleft palate or lip repaired, most children grow up to lead normal and healthy lives.